Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so very much for joining us today, and thank you for letting me be part of your day. My Bible is sitting open in front of me to the book of 2 Thessalonians in chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians in chapter 3. If you can right now, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me there. Here we are in the middle of this week. We're all trying to walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, as the song says. I hope your week is going well. I hope you're finding ways to uh, spend time uh, telling the gospel to somebody audibly, perhaps giving out a gospel track as you day by day go through your life. That's what I try to do. I hope you're trying to do that as well. But right now, let's spend some time bolstering our lives in the things concerning Christ that we can be stronger in the Lord. So if you can, get your Bible out. Join me, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And why don't you reach over and get something to write with and write on as well. I have a gospel tract in my hand I want to speak about, but I want to begin this way. Often I do begin with questions, and many of my questions really are designed to really just kind of draw your attention and pull you into the point of the broadcast. But my question today is probably a little more serious. Here it is. What is the Great Commission? What is the Great Commission? Now, you may not even know what the Great Commission is because you've never been taught about the Great Commission. At the end of each of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus gave the Great Commission. One of them says this, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now, when I ask people what the Great Commission is, Often, the only thing people will tell me is that the Great Commission means to go tell the gospel. And it does mean that, but that's that's only one-third of the Great Commission. Two-thirds of the Great Commission deals with education or discipleship. We are to disciple those people who come to Christ. Once they place their faith into Jesus Christ and rejoice in that, then the work of growing them up into Christ's likeness begins. And that's going to become an important issue here in the Bible passage before us today in 2 Thessalonians. Get your Bible ready. Let's study together. Before I read, beginning at verse 6, I have this gospel tract I want to tell you about. This one is entitled, Comfort in time of loss. Comfort in time of loss. And yes, this gospel tract is designed to help share the gospel around the times that we lose a loved one or a family member. You and I have a God of all comfort. Amen. He has grace to comfort our hurting hearts and grace for us to come alongside those who are hurting and be part of his comforting ministry. But dear friend, when you do lose a loved one, when your local church is having a funeral, perhaps it's an opportunity to share the gospel with somebody who's now open to it where they weren't before, because all of a sudden they are coming right up against the fact that life ends and eternity is to follow and they may be pondering, where will I spend eternity? Here's a great, very tender, very loving gospel tract, Comfort in Time of Loss. Please let me send it to you. Now be ready, at the end of this broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on. And he's going to give you our mailing address, going to give you our phone number, going to give you our website. Pick out one of those ways. Give to us your name and your mailing address. Let me send you free of charge. Now, free of charge, a complete sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. And in it, this one, Comfort in Time of Loss, will be there, but a lot of other tracts as well. Please do that today, won't you? 
Come with me here, 2 Thessalonians 3, beginning at verse 6. Here's what the Bible says. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we have behaved not ourselves disorderly among you, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Stop right there. Now listen, if you missed Monday's broadcast, I really encourage you to go to our website and listen to it. It lays the groundwork for today's broadcast. The verses that we're in deal with a very difficult topic for local church families. It's the topic of church discipline. Obeying God's word and disciplining a fellow church member, it ought to be a hard thing to do. It ought to be done with broken heartedness. And it's always the goal. Our goal must always be that there be a restoration of the sinning brother or sister back to a godly walk and back into a warm fellowship of our local church. On Monday's broadcast, I used three words, all beginning with the letter P as in the word Peter. And all these came based upon what I see taught in verse six. The first one was the word practice. Someone in the church was habitually practicing living out a life out of step with God's word. That's called disorderly living here. Word number two was the word procedure. The other believers are given a procedure to follow. When somebody is living a disorderly life, the other believers are to withdraw themselves from the sinning saints. They are to be aloof from them. The third word was the word power. This action of withdrawing ourselves is done in the name, or that is in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the head of the church. Jesus gives us our directions and tells us how to live for him and tells us how to react when some refuse to live a godly life. I have one more word that begins with the letter P I want to talk about, and it encompasses verses 7 and 9. That word is the word picture. Picture. Up to this point, we have not been told what the particular sin or form of disobedience is that is being talked about here, has been discovered at the church there in Thessalonica. In verses 7 to 9, Paul gives us a picture of how he conducted his life. Paul was a very hard worker. Uh, When we get into verses 10 to 13, we're going to have even further hints that this disorderly person seems to be one who habitually is not working to take care of his own needs. And as you know, starting back in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, God has ordained work. It's not part of God's curse on man due to sin and the fall. It is part of his blessing on mankind prior to the fall that you and I work. But what we need to learn from here is Paul's picture about work and his use of it to challenge this local church. First of all, in beginning at verses 7 here, there is an education that's been given. Notice verse 7, it begins this way, For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For yourselves know, notice that word, know how you ought to follow us. The Apostle Paul and the other Bible teachers that had been there had taught the younger believers how to live a daily Christian life according to the Word of God. They had discipled them, and that's exactly what Jesus said to do in the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and teach, or the word teach there is disciple in Matthew chapter 28. Well, Paul and the others are basically here saying, now, come with me, watch me live my Christian life, learn from me how to practice God's word, and so, therefore, an education had been given to these believers there in Thessalonica. There had been an education. That's in verse 7. But in verse 8, I have another E word. It's the word expenses. Paul says that when he was there preaching and starting this church, he did not take money for his spiritual labors. In verse 9, Paul's going to say he could have taken pay, 
but he, he had the right to take a, pa- a pay and take a salary, but he chose rather to work. Actually, he's going to work hard. He's going to work with travail, verse 8 says. He's going to work hard to provide for his needs, but not his only. It seems the needs of his ministry team. Every now and again, when this subject comes up, some people will ask me that, does that mean then that all pastors and all missionaries are to therefore work and not take a salary? We should not support them. The answer to that is no. The apostle Paul had been accused of doing apostolic work just to get rich. So to push away all those accusations, he said, I will choose to personally hold down a secular job and take care of my own needs. So far, I've used two words beginning with the letter E. They are the word education and expenses. Coming now to verse 9, I have the word example. Verse 9 says, not Uh, because we have no power, that is authority or right, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Now that word follow means to mimic or to imitate. Spiritual leaders are to lead by example, even in the area of being known as a hard worker. Beware of what many people refer to as a CEO mindset in a pastor. You know CEO, the chief officer of an organization. There's a CEO mindset in the lives of some pastors. Oh, friend, pastors are not called to be CEOs. They're called to be shepherds. That means that shepherds have to be with their sheep, with their flock. They have to be able to get close to their people and let their people get close to them. There's a statement made by the Apostle Paul to Timothy over in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. These, these verses have long challenged me. The verses begin with this words, but thou, Paul speaking to Timothy, but thou hast fully known my, and, and with that word my, Paul then rattles off nine things Timothy knew about the life of the Apostle Paul. And most of these nine things could never, ever, ever have been learned by sitting in a preaching service or sitting in a theology class. They would have to have been learned by Timothy walking alongside Paul over a period of time. This, my friend, is the missing element in so much of present-day discipleship. Are you one who needs to be discipled? If you are, find somebody to disciple you. Are you one who is mature enough to be a discipler? If you are mature enough to disciple somebody, who then are you mentoring? Who are you letting in close enough to see the nitty gritty of how you walk with Jesus? Discipling somebody does not require a degree in rocket science. It does require a plan and it requires a transparent life, living a transparent life where we let others see our, not only our successes, but our struggles is a big missing element into the growth and the development of new believers in the world of Christ today. God help us to be discipling younger believers, but doing it with a plan and a transparent heart. God help us. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.